<coughs> between Daniel 2 and Daniel 3, there is plenty of time. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made a gold image of gold. Now, this has to do with the head of gold that he was. I don't know. But there is an image of gold which is forbidden by Jews. It's nothing to Gentile, whose height was three score cubits, sixty, and the breadth thereof six cubits, six and six. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. The present day would be Iraq. Uh, this having two sides. No width would be some kind of cylinder. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king sent to gather together. Now get this important thing that shows up. The princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come up to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now these people of authority show up again. Notice the word set up in this chapter. Again, then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication. This is the only place in the Bible where the word dedication shows up. Of the image Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So we got civil leaders. We have an image of gold. We have a man that's setting up. Now we can't prove Nebuchadnezzar all the way as the Antichrist. But the Antichrist will set up an image for all the world to worship. And give power to it. Nebuchadnezzar's image don't have no power but to kill. And we'll see Nebuchadnezzar gets right. Then a herald, your newspaper reporter, your town crier, your announcer, your radio broadcaster, <coughs> cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, don't say Gentiles and don't say Jewish, O people, nations, and languages. Revelation 17, 15. There is no... <coughs> As you forgive me, I got a cold. There is no exemption from this law. And Nebuchadnezzar is bringing everybody in the civil government to be sure that this dedication will be observed. Ready? Here's another one. That at which time you hear the sound of cornet, flute, harp, sukba, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Music is for Satan. There's no words, just sounds. Ezekiel 28, Exodus 32. What he's got here is he's got a band, he's got a orchestra, he's got a jukebox. He fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So when the band plays, you fall on your knees to a man made man set up image of gold okay Does that seems so hard and who so 
falleth not down. Now, fall would be right where you're standing. As soon as you hit, you go right down to your knees, brother. And worship is, worship is, I mean, if you don't fall down and worship, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burn, burning, fiery furnace. A tool for idol worship in the new religion is to be burned. Burning fiery furnace, you got to make yourself wonder, is this where the image was made? you got to ask yourself those questions. Therefore, at that time, you ready? When all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbo, the sartre, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. There's your ecumenical movement. Everybody get together in unity. No problem. Do the music. We'll fall down. We'll have a little party. We'll break dance. We have no problem with this law. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accuse the Jews. Now, if we go back, we haven't really done this, but we've been doing it through the gospel. If you look at chapter 2, verse 10, at the end of the verse, it says, As such things as any magicians or astrologer or Chaldee, they were put under a death threat because they couldn't answer the king's dream, remember? And look at verse 30 of the same chapter 2. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom, that I have more than any living. But for their sakes. Run that back to 12. The wise men of Babylon. These men that are now showing for verse 8. Daniel by telling them the interpretation of the king's dream. dream saved their lives. And now in regard of thank you Daniel. Thank you Lord God Jehovah. We're going to turn your people in. You know what's going to happen in the tribulation period when that image is set up? You see those Jews over there? They're not worshiping your image, Mr. Antichrist. No matter what they'll do for you, and Daniel does a lot, they're not going to return the favor for you. So what's Jesus say in the book of Matthew? Turn the other cheek, forgive thy enemies. They ask for a coat, give two. Listen, you can't put that oh, as enemies. A Christian today in America has no enemies. And what Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo do are a perfect example of what Jesus taught in Matthew. They don't fight. They don't get a lawyer. They say, hey, they are very respectable Obama haters. But we'll get to that. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans, I have to say things like that, came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. A little buttering up. Doesn't Nebuchadnezzar remember that these guys couldn't do nothing, but Daniel could? Now you may say to yourself, where is Daniel? I know where Daniel is. Well, because he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to bow down for him. I don't know if that's the case, but I know where Daniel is. He's not present. How's that? Is that a good enough answer? <clears throat> Where is he? I don't know. But he's not here. Then spank and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Here we go again. Ready? Doesn't God just, just put in his Bible? Verily, verily, there's something important about this you need to get. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbook, the sultry, the do you know what ruins a church? One of the things that ruins the church. The music program. The choir group. The song leader. The music that's chosen by Christians. We've been in churches like that. We've been in churches where that music's been playing. So, man, you need earplugs. And all kinds of music. That's just an old 
English spelling of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. That's the law. They're confirming the law of the king. Is that what we heard, Mr. King? <clears throat> and whoso falls not down and worshipeth, repeated, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. It's just repeated. And the Bible records it again. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Daniel 2.49. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, the king, or did, Shadrach, Meshach, and go over the affairs of the These guys are just, we didn't get the office. Hey, I know how we can get the office. We get rid of these three guys, and we can get it. We'll step on their toes at the corporate ladder. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Uh-oh. You got three men of an entire nation of people, of nations, and languages. Don't you think they stood, they stood out? When the music played, what did everybody do? They fell down. So what would leave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Standing. Now, that's not a sore thumb to the king. If you're not to be a sore thumb to the, to the world, stand on that street corner and preach the gospel, while other churches will not. Go knock on people's door with a gospel and gospel child when other churches are not. Be that sore thumb. So, they are disobeying the law. Are they doing wrong? Yes. In the eyes of the law, they are doing wrong. But in the eyes of God, they can't honor that image. It is forbidden by the law. But sometimes in order to serve God and do right, you got to take a punishment. Romans 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, he just didn't get angry. He got rage. We think the Antichrist is going to be. And Fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Menego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Give this king credit. He wants to know, is it true? He's seeking the truth. O Shadrach, Meshach, and Menego. Do not ye serve my gods? That image is a god of Nebuchadnezzar. Nor worship the golden image which I have set up. No, they don't. But let's read on. Now, he's going to give them a second chance to rechant. If ye be ready that at what time you hear, here we go again, the sound of the cornet. The flute, the harp, the salt book, the salt tree, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. How many times is that showing up? Ye fall down and worship the image which I made. I have made. Well, that's okay. Good. You'll be happy with me. You can live. But if you will, if ye worship not. You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that capital G God that shall deliver you out of my hands, life or death? And that capital G is changed in many Bibles to a small g. Shadrach, Meshach, Benigo, Started a tea party and revolted and got their guns and went after the government. Absolutely not. Shadrach, Meshach, Benigo answered and said to the king, Old Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. <coughs> There's no prayer needed. There's no worry. There's no need to be anxious. If it be so, our capital G-O-D, 
whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. There's no questioning. And he will deliver us out of thy hand. Okay. I mean, he says, which God shall deliver you out of my hands? Our God, King Nebuchadnezzar, respectfully. Notice how respectful they are to the king. But if not, if we're not going to come out of this alive, but it, be it known unto thee, O king, respectful, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We may not have physical life. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. But no one thing, God's going to deliver us. Then, with Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage, his face, was changed against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and commanded that they should, they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Uh, it would be Acts 16, 13, a habit or custom. Whatever this fiery furnace was, was whatever the degrees was to be to set, put it seven times more. This is a reaction of religion and the government to a Christian. You think they love when you come knocking on your doors? You think you, they love when you come preaching to them? If they could have their way, they would heat you up and burn you. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs to find out. And he commanded the most mighty men. Why the most mighty men? That were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He took away that chance, didn't he? He didn't give them that chance like he said he was going to. They said, we're not going to do it. He calls his might. Because why? Because if it's the same God of Daniel, I've got a God here I can't mess with. I better call the most mighty men I can and cast them into the burning fire. How many times has that burn, burning fire furnace shown up? And we know by the book of uh, Revelation that in the tribulation period, it's going to be the guillotine. Then these men were bound in their coats. Maybe they chop off their heads and put them into a fire. Listen, and you may get this word, you better know your history. Faggots were burned all over England with Christians on it. But you don't know what words mean. That's why you just got angry at me. Uh, the, then these men were bound in their coats. You know what a coat is, right? And their holes in. Leg garments, a pantyhose for a man. How about that one where a man should not wear what pertains to a woman, a woman not should not. These men were wearing pantyhose. You seen them, or was it the, the Shakespeare plays or something like that? The, the, baller, the, the men ballerinas, they wear the hose in. And their hats. You know, they took Jesus Christ and stripped him naked on the cross. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a little more decency in their, what they thought was going to be death. They were just tied. They weren't beaten. And their outer, other garments, and were cast in the midst of the burning fire furnace again. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, rushing, hurry, was impatient, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they become ashes. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go into the fiery furnace, the men that held them are burnt on the spot. And I don't think that was an act of God. I think that was just the result of, like you said, such haste, such seven times more that when they open it up, uh, they call it an... Uh, I just forgot. Up oh, backdraft. The backdraft got him. And these three men. Look how many times they're mentioned. Shadrach, Meshach. Look at the repeating. Over and over, chapter 3. 
Meshach and Abednego fell down. Oh, they fell down. But they didn't fall down to the image. Bound. The people weren't bound. They were bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Paragraph mark. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, almost like stone, astonished, and rose up in haste. Boy, he's quick, isn't he? And spank, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Notice how he clues himself in it. I'd cast those men in there. Didn't we throw three of them in there? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Yeah. He answered the king and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now go back to what he said in verse 15, the big G. Who is that God? Who is that God? The Son of God. Again, Bibles change the to a son. Even my Bible has a note, a son of God. Wrong. I'm a son of God. Adam was a son of God. The angels are sons of God. But guess who the son of God is? Guess who's in that fire with those men 580 years before he was born? Jesus Christ. Guess who Nebuchadnezzar said that was? Verse 15. Capital G. Right? Who did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say it was in verse 17? Capital G. O D. Right? Well, I guess the Jehovah Witnesses have it wrong. God came down and joined these three young men, or men, in the fire. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High, capital G-O-D. Don't you think he's now convinced? After Daniel, that dream, and now? Come forth. Come hither. You think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Benjamin are like, no. <laughs> We'd rather stay here with God. <laughs> Don't you think Paul wanted to stay there in the third heaven? No. Yeah, get down there, Paul. No. Get down there, Paul. No. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Benjamin came forth. Oh, look at that. They obeyed the king that threw them in the fire without no retaliation. They were thrown into a fiery furnace. And when the king said, come on out, they have God present with them. And what did they do? They came forth out of the midst of the fire. That's remarkable. And the princes. And the governor. And the captains. And the king's counselors, witnesses. You can't say this story is not real. The princes, the governors, the kings, the king's counselors, and the king, and ne uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and God witnessed this activity. Who else is there that afternoon? This is like 400 people seeing a resurrected Jesus Christ. You could bring this into the court. And these men. <coughs> being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Now try that one. Nor was a hair of their head singed. Really? How did they do that? Neither were their coats changed. And here's a real miracle. Nor the smell of fire had passed upon them. They didn't smell like smoke. They didn't, they didn't burn up. Their hair wasn't singed. They came out perfectly whole. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar spank and said, Blessed be the God, capital G, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel, Galatians 4.14, and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, Romans 12, 1, that they might not serve nor worship any god, a motive, except their own, capital G-O-D. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is almost convinced. And when we read the next chapter, Lord willing, somehow, Old Testament, I said Nebuchadnezzar, when the books are open, Revelation 20, I do believe his name is written in, written in the book of life. There's no conversion. But there, don't be fooled. Therefore, I make a decree, here's a law, that every people, nation, and language, does that sound familiar? That's the people he told to worship his image. What happened to his image? It's never spoken of again. And we close this chapter with how we start this chapter. People, nation, and language, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, That's interesting. Look at what it says in chapter 4, verse 8. But at the last, Daniel came before me, the king, whose name is Beltsizer, according to the name of my God. That's a small g. See, he's not convinced yet. There's no conversion yet. Right now, he's just got another god on the mantelpiece. Against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But God sees this, and he sees it for a heart that wants to do right. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And in chapter 4, we're going to see a mouth. Confessions made unto salvation. He's going to do a bunch of works right now. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. <coughs> and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Sure won't be a pleasure to your neighborhood. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Alright, he still believes in God, but this God of Daniel, this God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there's something about him. He is sure a lot better than the gods I've been serving, the king. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They get a double promotion. In the province of Babylon. The work of God, Daniel 2, is he heard God. Daniel 3, he saw God. And Daniel 4, he felt God. In chapter 4, we're going to get with the biggest sin there ever there is. We're going to get the sin of pride. But Nebuchadnezzar, he's not walking away from this, this, this event that just happened to him. He's not walking out as a heathen. He's walking out there. In his heart, he knows God. I do believe by the next chapter, he'll get right. And, and his image disappears. And a law has been changed for all the people and all the nations and all the languages. Instead of worshiping that golden image, you better honor this God. We have changed gods in the same chapter. We started off with one God, now we're on to God. That's a good step. Which shows salvation is not just overnight. It may take time. That's why it says, Paul says, uh, Paul's 
planted or I watered, it takes steps. 